In the opening scene of the movie, a highly talented young man loses a game of Go. At one point, a haze clouds his eyes, preventing him from seeing or calculating the next move. Rather than continuing the fight, he chooses to surrender, disappointing the audience, who then leave the room. Depressed and defeated, Tae Sok walks the rain-soaked streets. His brother appears and asks for a favor. He drives Tae Sok to a location where the young man is supposed to play a study game of Go. Tae Sok learns that the outcome of the game could be dangerous and decides to leave. His brother stops him, urging him to win the match, without explaining what's at stake. According to the plan, Yo Nim, equipped with an earpiece and a micro camera, enters the room to play the game. Unexpectedly, Tae Sok, who is sitting in a car, plays the game, whispering the coordinates of each move into the microphone. His accomplice steps out of the car several times to relieve himself. As it turns out, the opponent is also not playing with his own mind. A whole team evaluates the opponent's game and makes counter moves. An older man is replaced by a woman when he can no longer think through the next actions. Consequently, the opponent starts playing much better, surprising Tae Sok. Bad weather disrupts the transmission signal, distorting the picture on the screen. Tae Sok asks his brother not to make any decisions until the connection is restored, but his brother makes a move to avoid suspicion. The move turns out to be wrong, and the woman is ordered to end the game. At this moment, the man who had relieved himself hides upon noticing a thug approaching the car with a metal rod. The thug smashes the car, pulls out the whisperer, and starts beating Tae Sok, breaking his glasses and face, before dragging him into a building. The opponent is disappointed to find fake money in Yo Nim's bag. Tae Sok sees his brother stripped and beaten, and pleads for their family's mercy, but in response, he only receives slaps and humiliation. A well-dressed middle-aged man enters the room and issues two orders. To save the younger brother's life, the older one must swallow the ghost stones. If Tae Sok wants to save his older brother, he must defeat the company's leader in a game of Go. While Yo Nim is swallowing the stones, the younger brother, with trembling hands, makes a move. Tae Sok hovers his hand over the gaming board and, seeing his brother's distress, accidentally drops a game piece. The man in the suit counts this as a legitimate move and is pleased that the opponent made a mistake. Tae Sok falls to his knees and begs for a pass, but instead, he receives a dagger strike to the shoulder. The next victim is the older brother, he falls to the ground with his throat cut. The professional cheat stages the fratricide and places the knife in the hand of the victim. The action shifts to a Korean prison, where falsely accused Tae Sok is sent. Thanks to his Go skills, the young man helps secure temporary release for the prison boss. With his victory, he offends the pride of the prison chief and is sent to solitary confinement for a month. There, through food, he receives an offer from a neighbor through the wall to play a well-known board game. After spending enough days on this activity, the unfortunate friend appreciates his skills and thanks him for the time spent. With plenty of free time on his hands, Tae Sok asks the prison boss to teach him how to fight. Between training sessions and sparring, he helps the prison chief improve his Go game technique, which allows the officer to win a trophy at the City Go Championship. As Tae Sok's sentence comes to an end, a local authority offers him a job in his gang. The young man agrees but asks to borrow a large sum of money. The man gives his approval, hoping that Tae Sok will survive until their meeting on the outside. The intelligent man in glasses and a suit continues his criminal activities. He arrives with his team for new merchandise and buys a young girl who excels in all tests based on Go. The seller decides to send his men after them to kill everyone and retrieve the girl. However, the buyer outsmarts them and eliminates them one by one. The owners of an underground club notice a man winning at Go repeatedly and cashing in a large sum of money. On the director's orders, they send a beautiful, charming girl to him. Peggy defeats her opponent in two games and offers a rematch, but he calmly declines. She leaves him half the money and departs. Besides earning payment for the game she played, Peggy is also entrusted with a new young girl. Over lunch, she learns that her new charge is a 10-year-old named Liang Liang. Tae Sok visits the family of his older brother and meets his nephew. In a rundown room, the boy tells him that their mother has passed away, but their grandmother remains, who strictly forbids playing board games. Tae Sok promises to visit his family again and leaves. Following the trail of one of his tormentors, the protagonist finds a small Go club. The club director organizes a match between Tae Sok and Mr. Oh Tae Sok loses almost everything, which lulls his opponent's vigilance, and he proposes to Mr. Oh a chance to win it back. He bets the remaining bills in 10 slaps. The situation greatly amuses O, oh, and unsuspectingly, he agrees. At the end of the game, Tae Sok announces that he beat his opponent by half a point. The first two slaps bring the loser to tears and knock him off his chair. An enraged Mr. O oh draws a dagger and threatens, but suddenly loses consciousness from a punch to the face. When he comes to, he finds himself taped to a pole. Realizing he won't be recognized, Tae Sok smashes one lens of his glasses. He administers the remaining slaps with such force that the skin on Mr. O's forehead splits. The last two blows blind the offender. Everywhere he looks, the ill-fated board game is mentioned. In one of these places, Tae Sok finds an old acquaintance, Kong Su, who dodges a beating for another deceit in the game. 
The protagonist asks to leave the guy alone and give him a moment for a serious talk. Hey Sok asks the young man if he remembers his accomplice. Hanging his head down from the roof, the guy finally recalls that he knows his brother. Hey Sok shows his friend a photo of the head of a gang. Seeing this face, Kong Su tries to leave quickly, but hearing the reward amount of $300,000, he decides to stay. Of course, not for the money, but solely for revenge for such a good person. The two men set out to find Master Wong. Among the street onlookers, they find a crowd with a blind old man in the center playing go against his opponent. With respect, Tae Sok asks the master to teach him the game and intentionally loses with a difference of half a point. At the end of the game, he invites the man for a drink and proposes to unite against a dangerous individual. Initially, Master Wong refuses, as what can one do against a tyrant who can only maim and kill? Yet, shared grief binds the fates of these people. The group heads to the area where the master lives. Passing by his daughter's house, Tae Sok informs him that she is beautiful, which greatly pleases the old man. They find the junkyard owner Ho Mok Su, who has also suffered from the antics of the common enemy. Instead of his right hand, he wears a prosthesis into which various tools can be screwed. Initially, Ho Mok Su doesn't want to talk to his old friend Wong because he hasn't visited him in a long time. When he learns there's a chance to settle the score with the enemy, he changes his mind. Kong Su, one of the most experienced con artists, introduces the team members to the system by which this club operates. The manager of this establishment is a skilled player with excellent self-control. Soon Su caters exclusively to wealthy clients. Bets in the special room can amount to several hundred thousand dollars, and for the right to participate in the game, the wealthy pay 10% of their winnings. These establishments have regular clients who don't know how to play, but work an entire month for just one hour spent in this place. The gray-haired man, Wang Sensei, originally from China, plays decently and is skilled in calligraphy. He teaches both children and adults, and is especially pleased with payment for several months in advance. He also specializes in secret cues, making him hard to beat. Another member of the group is Odoraya, a man who resembles a monkey, puts people off guard, and then strikes. However, the most dangerous member of their gang is Sal Su, an intelligent man in glasses and a suit who takes lives without the slightest remorse. The only woman in their team is Kuo Nu Chong, also known as Pegu. Since the age of 15, she has been winning at Mahjong in various competitions, becoming the world champion in Asian Games in 2006. However, she abruptly ends her career the following year and disappears from all radars. Kong Su believes she is the director's mistress. During a Mahjong game, Pegu sits at a table with two regular clients. One of them wins, and the other leaves, citing wedding preparations. Tae Sok takes this spot and quickly captures the attention of the beautiful girl. His face is very familiar to her, but she can't place exactly where she's seen him before. Ho Mok Su prepares portable mini cameras and communication devices for the upcoming performance. Kong Su plays the role of a weak player but an expressive person who loses hundreds of thousands in an amateur game. He gets visibly upset, shouts, waves his arms and legs, and amplifies the emotional drama in every way. He smokes cigarettes in packs and points out which ones are his favorite so that everyone present remembers these details. Kong Su spends all his money, demonstratively goes to cash in a new amount, and leaves his documents and car as collateral. This time he plays calmly, following Wong's cues. He secretly places the bug and camera in a pile of trash and asks the hunchback servant of the establishment to clear his table. The bewildered opponent demands to check Kong Su for hidden cues. The staff finds nothing and escorts the aggressive losing participant outside. Soon Su personally apologizes for the incident and offers to play a game in the special room. The hunchback finds Kong Su on the roof of the building and allows himself to straighten up momentarily, stepping out of his role. He receives a monetary reward for his help and hands over the hidden surveillance device found in the trash pile. Delighted with his earnings, he reverts back to his previous posture and limps back to the club. Two old friends discuss their fate of playing Go for money. The master mentions the divine move, which he has never seen, a move that can be made even when it seems you've lost. His companion is sure that even such a move can be countered with a stronger solution. In another Mahjong game with a familiar group, one of the players loses again. The future groom apologizes and leaves for home. A regular invites the fourth player, Sal Su, to join him at the table. Sal Su joins the game with restraint, listening more than speaking. During the opponent's dialogue, the director recognizes that across from him sits Tae Sok, a former math teacher now working as a programmer. The guy wins at Mahjong and invites all the participants to a restaurant at his expense, but in the end, Tae Sok is left alone with Kuo Nu Chong. The girl tells him that she managed to gather the combination before him, she just didn't notice it. She asks him not to rely solely on luck. After the date, Pegu heads to the boss's office, where she is interrogated about her new acquaintance. She claims the guy is a programmer who comes to the club to relieve stress. The man doesn't trust her and reminds her that her life is in his hands. Despite him putting his hand on her neck, Kuo Nu Chong dares to object, hinting that it's unknown who is destined to leave first. Kong Su wins a game of Go against Sun Su. 
he demonstratively hands over several packs of money to his opponent for a taxi. The manager thanks him for the lesson and suggests playing another game in the near future. This time the game takes place on Kong Su's turf. A large truck container serves as his office where he sells toys and adult films on the global market. He cheerfully shows the manager his goods, although the man is eager to start. While the car owner goes to the bathroom, Soon Su checks the container for mechanisms and cues but finds nothing. Not far from the truck, Tae Sok and Ho Mok Su are preparing once again to win. Kong Su talks a lot about his business and deliberately rolls up his sleeves and adjusts his shirt collar to assure the guest of the absence of cheating devices. Instead of conventional cue options, the guys use Morse code technique. Kong Su's excessive talkativeness annoys the manager and forces him to rudely tell the office owner to shut up. Nonetheless, the guy wins $200,000, and the guest leaves empty-handed again. Returning to the club, Soon Su asks Wang Sensei to help him win during the next meeting. In exchange for his service, the gray-haired man asks for half of the winnings. However, this doesn't help. Wang's game turns out to be much stronger than the calligraphy teacher's cues. The manager loses his temper and attacks his opponent with a knife. He is stopped by the opening door of the container. Seizing the moment, the businessman runs away with the money, and Tae Sok, who appears out of nowhere, attacks his enemy. A long fight ends with Soon Su's head smashing against the car window. Wang Sensei's attempts to escape are in vain as his car crashes into Homok Su. Soon Su finds himself locked in an icy room at a temperature of minus 36 degrees. Tae Sok is nearby, stripped to the waist, as is his opponent. They start a speed game where the one who runs out of sand in the hourglass loses. The men are covered in frost, and light bulbs burst from the cold. Soon Su's sand runs out, but instead of making a move, he grabs the knife stuck in the board and lunges at Tae Sok. Tae Sok fights back and throws him a sheet with a puzzle. The coordinates of the first move in this puzzle match the code to the lock. The main character goes to meet the beautiful Pegu and suggests having some warming drinks. Later, the girl loses at Go, fulfills her companion's wish, and the meeting ends with a kiss. Sal Su finds the frozen body in the cold room and a piece of paper with a phone number. He learns from the caller that another member of his team is in the cupboard of this room. In another room, Wang Sensei sits immobilized. Next to him, the club director finds a laptop and a note with an account through which a high-stakes game will take place. Confident in his victory, Wang Sensei asks his boss to light a cigarette and bring him some water. Yet, he loses by half a point and loses his tongue. Messages coming from the opponent indicate that he is watching what's happening. Sal Su opens the window and sees his opponent in a cafe across from the calligraphy school. During a barbecue, Kong Su wonders who taught Wang to play Go so well. The man admits that someone made a board for the blind and taught him to play for a year, but then suddenly disappeared. Tae Sok speculates that it could have been a cellmate who told him how to find the master. After all, when he was released from prison, he was very curious about who played with him. But there was neither a person nor wall drawings in the cell. This means only one thing. The blind prisoner beat his opponent at Go. Sal Su sits in his steam room and watches a video where his archenemy kisses Pegu. The master asks Kong Su to help him transform before meeting his daughter, but their plans are interrupted by Sal Su's men. A noose is thrown around Kong Su's neck, and he is left balancing on tiptoes. The director forces him to solve the same puzzle that was intended for his man in the refrigerator. For each wrong answer, a finger is broken. After losing two phalanges, Kong Su randomly guesses the correct move. The next stage for him becomes a game of Go for his own life. The teacher stands up for Kong Su and suggests playing blindfolded. Instead of Sal Su, behind the scenes, the little girl Liang Liang plays and defeats the master. Wang attacks the enemy but receives numerous injuries in return and, pinned to the table with a knife, bleeds out. Symbolically dressed in a white suit, the main character arrives at the meeting place. He sees the terrible condition of his friends and, for their salvation, puts everything he has on the line in the final game of Go. Before the game, Tae Sok takes the old man to the car, along with Ho Mok Su, and learns from Wang that this competition is impossible to win. At stake in the game, Pegu learns from Tae Sok that he will need three handicap stones to fight for his life, but she doesn't guarantee his victory. As the players begin the game, Sal Su sends a group of people to eliminate Ho Mok Su. Putting on a mask of composure, Tae Sok makes the first move. A knife is pressed to his beloved, and he is strongly urged to play at full strength. She finds a way out of the situation and discreetly gestures to Liang Liang the needed coordinates. As a result, the final game ends in a draw, much to Sal Su's surprise. Tae Sok suggests determining the winner in a different way and decides to show how one white piece will destroy all the black ones. Sal Su wounds Chong in the stomach, and his men attack the main character all at once. Fighting off the enemies, Tae Sok uses everything at his disposal, from the enemy's cold weapons to bricks from a broken wall. His torso, which was previously wrapped, shields him from a blade strike, yet his jacket turns crimson. With his last strength, he unleashes a flurry of stabbing blows on Sal Su. Tae Sok pins the enemy's arm to the table and slowly slides down the wall. 
After some time, the young man finds himself at the doorstep of the daughter of the deceased Master Wong, delivering a check for $1 billion from him. He provides for his nephew and asks him to solve puzzles three times a day. Ho Mok Su misses his friend and creates a wooden bust of him to somehow feel his presence. The main character arrives at the meeting place with the master and pays tribute to Teacher Wong. He pours his favorite drink into a glass and tosses dice into it. No one has ever seen the divine move, and all that remains for ordinary people is to manage on their own. Fortunately, Kong Su, Kin Nu Chong, and Liang Liang are alive. Tae Sok and his loyal friends head to Pusan to thank one person for his significant contribution to this victory. What would you do if you were in the protagonist's place? Share your thoughts in the comments below, hit the like button, and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next videos.